Harry Scaliotis. He's head of client portfolio management at Man Investments AHL Diversified Fund. Harry, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Hi. Also, I mean, just hearing a few comments uh, off the back of the S&P downgrade for U.S.'s credit rating. I mean, it followed a tumultuous week on global markets, didn't it? We're already seeing the sell-off started in Asia, continuing to Europe. Is it the start of another volatile week? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, as you know, AHL is, uh, is a systematic friend-following manager, so we've been positioned pretty defensively uh, now for um, certainly this month, um, short in equities and, and, and long in the U.S. Treasury markets and, and long commodities like gold, where you know, the, the safe haven assets are certainly being sought out. Uh, so we're not, um, we don't expect any different uh, action this week. Mm. Uh, certainly if we do see a, a reversion in the markets, then we'll be changing our positions as well. But at, at the minute, we're pretty defensively positioned across the spectrum. So uh, you agree with some of the cons comments we were hearing earlier on that the downgrade doesn't actually impact the level of risk with U.S. Treasuries, right? Yeah, well, I think you know, one of the risks that we were certainly looking at um, after downgrade and on, on the weekend would, was that there might be some forced selling um, of U.S. Treasuries. But it looks uh, today as though the markets really looked through that. Um, Treasury markets, when I last checked, were, were, were rallying slightly. Um, and the focus, I think, is, is going to revert again back onto Europe and, and Spain and Italy. So um, I haven't really seen uh, anything to show me that, that the market is, uh, is dumping U.S. Treasury. So I think that the way that we're positioned right now um, is... Uh, is the right way to be. I mean, the U.S. hasn't had to pay. Uh, it's been spared from the price of the premium that many other com countries that are struggling with high debt loads have had to pay. Do you think there is a small chance, a small risk that that may be about to change, that the interest rate won't be staying so low for an extended period? It, it doesn't seem to be an, an immediate risk. Yeah. Um, you know, but the benefit that we have um, with our strategy, we're, we're trading the futures markets, which are very liquid, and we're, we're really following recent patterns of activity. So if we see a turnaround uh, there, uh, we'll be uh, selling our, our U.S. Treasury positions as well. The question is, where do investors go uh, if, if uh, they can't invest in, in U.S. Treasuries? And it will probably be to continue to drive um, things like precious metals are higher and so that's really... Yeah, I was really... going to ask you, do you think we could see, I mean we just saw gold break through 1700 just today, do you think gold has a lot further to go, particularly in the aftermath of the US downgrade? We're not seeing any reaction yet, but nevertheless could this be a good thing for gold bulls? I, I certainly think so. I mean, gold is, is up uh, about 20% uh, this, this year. Um, at its peak, silver prices were, were up 60%, so, so it was actually much stronger than, uh, than gold prices. Um, from our perspective, um, as I say, we're really looking to, to follow trends and, and try and, uh, and profit from the full extent of the, of the market trend. And when the market does reverse, we will be giving back some, some of that. So we're not going to anticipate um, what the, uh, the fair level of gold is or try and, and mm. get out of the market before that. Um, but there's no reason right now to expect that that trend can't continue. And how are you positioning yourself right now to sort of mitigate the effects of the turmoil that we're seeing in financial markets? Well, as I said, it's, it's really a very defensive portfolio yeah. um, across the board. Um, probably the, the one exception is in the currency markets. Um, we've been um, short the U.S. dollar, and, uh, and we've been cutting back that, that exposure. We've, had, we've favored more the commodity-type uh, currencies. Well, the commodity currencies have done uh, very well. The Australian uh, market and also the, the fundamentals of the Australian economy have supported um, the Australian dollar as well as interest rates, uh, South African rand. So that's mm. probably where we do have a bit more or have had more risk appetite. But otherwise, um, being long bonds, short equity markets, uh, and long, long precious metals and, and short in the energy markets as well. So universally, outside of, of currencies, pretty defensively uh, positioned. And what about <laughs> other traditional safe haven currencies like the Swiss franc, the yen? Do you like those much? Yeah, we've got, um, we've got a long position in the Japanese yen, we have a smaller position in, in the Swiss franc. Obviously, we've uh, seen a, uh, some intervention uh, by central banks there and, and the threat, threat to do so again. Um, but they're, as I say, relatively smaller positions. The bigger positions we have right now are um, long the, the U.S. Treasuries, Deutsche Bank futures, and, and short in equities, and long precious metals. Okay, really good to talk to you, Harris Galliotis. Thanks for coming in.